Stanislaw here with Motion VFX, and in this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at using M Puppet in Final Cut and Apple Motion to create the same project and go a little bit further in Apple Motion. Let's get started in Final Cut. First things first, let's make sure that the item that we're going to be using for our puppet contains an alpha channel. So you can see here if it's got transparency, it's got an alpha channel. You can find mPuppet inside the Titles and Generators tab in Final Cut Pro. So I'll open up Generators, click on mPuppet, and we're going to drag mPuppet into our timeline. Next, I'll drag the edge of the mPuppet generator to match the edge of duration of my clip. Once mPuppet is selected, inside the Inspector, let's use the Drop Zone well and place the source image into it. So I'll click on my source image and then apply clip. This image is a little large, so I'll use the scale control and just scale this down. Next, let's click on the image to add puppet handles. So we already have by default our add handle selection enabled. So just simply click on your image anywhere that it's highlighted to create the handles and the mesh for your puppet. Each handle you create will be given a name and number, and this will be important when we're animating them. For now, you can click and drag any handle to see how your puppet will start working. To see what's happening, let's click the Reveal Mesh button. With this enabled, we can see how our puppet is being stretched and how our puppet is being generated with this mesh. We'll create some more points to make some more articulation. I like to place them wherever there will be different joints create some believable movement. If you need to remove any handles, inside the toolbar, select the Remove Handle tool and select any points. The Marquee Selection tool lets us select multiple handles at once. Here we can move them or even rotate them. Let's start animating this. Inside the inspector, I'll open up the handles and our handles list out every handle and point that we've created. With all of these different points, I'm going to move my different handles into their position and you can see that it's changing inside the inspector at the same time. So with this, we'll take our playhead and move it to the very beginning of our timeline and I'll set a keyframe for all these different handles. And next, we'll move our playhead to the end of our timeline and I'll just select all of these and you can see how they're all changing in real time as I'm moving them inside the canvas. Let's use the marquee and I'll select both these points to move them both at the same time and get them in better position. Okay, so now that we've made those movements, the keyframes are automatically made between those two points and all the animation is set by a smooth interpolation by default. To wrap this up, if I want to change any of the animation, I'll just move to my keyframe and move my handles. Let's take this farther inside Apple Motion. Inside Apple Motion, I have the same exact scene we were just working with. The main difference is inside Apple Motion, and Puppet will be placed as an effect onto our image. Outside of that, the workflow is pretty much the same. The inspector contains all our keyframe animation and it's still interpolated smooth by default. But in Apple Motion, we also have a keyframe editor. This lets us really manipulate our keyframes a lot more than we can do inside Final Cut. Let's make this a little bit more interesting and apply M Puppet to another layer. So I've got this smoke layer and inside our inspector, I'll navigate down to Motion VFX and place M Puppet onto the smoke layer. Inside the canvas, I'll just hover over to see the preview of a possible mesh that M Puppet could make. Making some different handles, I'll move my playhead to the beginning and open up the handles inside the inspector to create some keyframes. Next, I'll move my playhead to the end of my timeline and I'll move some of these handles to create some animation as it's playing back. Let's turn on the original layer and take a look. That's looking good, but let's make this a little bit more interesting and make a clone of that smoke layer just to give this a little bit more depth. 
Because it's a clone, it already has all that animation that we just created. Now so far we can do most of that inside Final Cut no problem. But something we can't do is add a camera inside Final Cut. And when we add a camera, we have a whole lot of controls that we didn't have before. Now something you should know about working with cameras in motion is that they only work with 3D layers. So you have to make sure you have 3D layers in your project. Now once we have this in here, I'm going to turn on the auto keyframing tool here. This lets me automatically create keyframes with moving pretty much anything in my scene. I'll turn this on and then use the camera controls to create some parallax movement with my animation. Now I've already set my layers at different Z depths, which is why we kind of see this movement. Because I have my auto keyframes turned on, changing the camera controls automatically creates all my different keyframes. So I can just line this up and create some really great depth that I couldn't get just in Final Cut alone. Again, my name is Stanislaw with Motion VFX. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.